Hello, this is Dr. Scott McLean, and this is a WebEx meeting about cement free aesthetics used in the ASC abutment. Now, ASC stands for angulated screw channel, so let's have a look at this technology and see how it works. There's been a long time debate about whether you should place an implant crown on an implant using a cement retained option versus a screw retained option. During a recent study in 2009, Wilson found in his conclusions that most of the peri-implant disease, so in fact 81% of it, was caused by excess cement staying in the sulcus area. And furthermore, if this was cleaned up, 74% of these completely healed. Many times the implant ends up in a cement retained position as shown here. However, the ASC abutment can be tipped backwards up to 25 degrees making it into a screw retained option. Once the channel was tipped, Nobel BioCare had to also develop a new screw. So the new screw technology was called the OmniGrip screw, so they also developed the OmniGrip driver. So here you can see the screw has to be parallel with the implant in order to lock the abutment conical connection into the implant head. So this articulated screw system enables you to tip the screwdriver back up to 25 degrees while still maintaining the ability to tighten this down to 35 newton centimeters. So you're locking the uh, particular abutment down into the conical connection of the implant. Now if we look at this abutment design up a little bit closer, we'll see this minimum thickness of the core of the uh, implant abutment, which is the channel. So if we turn the channel technology on and start to pull it back, you see that this minimum core is actually turning at the same time, enabling you to keep the strength that you need in this abutment. We have found that we like to keep this lingual area in zirconia, so not adding porcelain here, to maintain the strength as we're tightening down the abutment. So if we take the channel, we can tip it from mesial to distal to put the channel in the ideal position. But watch what happens when we tip the channel back more than the 25 degrees, it turns red. So this gives us a visual signal saying that the channel has gone too far and that the technology will not work in this particular situation. Now I'd like to share a case with you that shows the ASC abutment in action. So here a patient came about four years ago. They had a Maryland bridge that was coming in and out of their mouth. And so they decided that they were going to have a dental implant. So you can see the bone was uh, had a defect here a very thin bone which is going to dictate the angulation of the implant. So I did a connective tissue graft here, placed an implant, and was able to get nice stability, but we let the implant heal for three months, came back, placed an abutment, keeping it super gingival on the lingual, slightly subgingival on the buccal, so that we were able to cement this. So you can see the reason it had to be cemented was because of this buccal screw channel. A porcelain fused to zirconia crown was fabricated using the Nobel Procera software and then this was cemented on with Reliac cement to get a good seal around the implant abutment. You see the cement gets expressed out both buccal and lingually. You go back in, cleave it off with a sickle and then get all the cement out taking an x-ray to make sure you do so. Look here I can see a little bit of cement that's kind of locked underneath so I go back in with my sickle, get this piece out and then confirm that I have all the cement out. So you can see that the connection is actually working very well, maintaining bone so that the platform shift and the conical connection are doing a great job. Lo and behold, four years later, the patient comes back with a fracture on the porcelain. So since this is not screw retained, I have to destroy the crown in order to get this off. So I cut a channel and then start to take off the implant crown. And uh, what I found underneath was a surprise. I found this cement that was hiding under the emergence profile. So up in this kind of wine glass area up underneath the tissue was the cement and then on the margin also there was some more cement. So I had thought I had this all out. In fact I had documented this case to show how well I had done so. It's always great when new solutions come out like the ASC abutment because really it's a game changer for implant dentistry because we're able to turn the screw channel and make this cement retain option back into a screw retain option to minimize problems. So we begin by scanning. We do a scan 
of the locator, so the implant locator itself, also the soft tissues, and plus we also scan the opposing arch. So we can place all these together on the computer so we can design our abutment. Once all the models have been scanned, then you can align them in a 3D digital model to enabling you to do the design of the abutment. So here you can see the minimum thickness of the zirconia. We can also see that the emergence profile of the original soft tissue model is captured and the abutment will actually be magnetized to the side of this to have the perfect shape of abutment coming up from the implant to tissue level. So this is called the magnetized tool and it's a great way to make this so it's accurate. We look at the abutment by itself by removing the rest of the model and rotate it around. You can see the Omnigrip screw down inside. You can see how the zirconia sits down on the metal connector on the flat surface. And then there's little U-clips. You can see them here on the side of the abutment. So these little U-clips are friction clips that hold the abutment together uh, prior to the screw going through. So the screw is what holds everything together. It's not held together by the clips. It's the screw that holds the abutment together and once you tighten it this is a great system instead of cement. Once we do a virtual wax up of the porcelain, we can see that the screw channel is even in a worse position because it's coming out directly on the buckle cusp. So we don't want this. This would be a cement retained option. So here's the beauty of this system. This is the fantastic part. We can see the channel as it comes out. We'll be able to grab this handle and start to tip it to the lingual. So I'll tip it down a little bit for you so you can see. I'll tip this into the lingual and you'll notice that I'm getting this into the ideal fossa position so that I can do a screw retained crown. So I can also take it and take it to the mesial a little bit to idealize it from a mesial distal aspect as well. So this is a great option. You can see I'm now able to have this screw channel in the ideal position. As we rotate this abutment around, you'll see little handles. These little handles are dots. And you can pull on these dots and cause the thickness of the zirconia to be added to or taken away. And there's different tools you can push and pull on this. But ultimately, we want the channel to be right where we want it in the central fossa area. So there's three parts of this that are, that are going to be put together. The zirconia abutment, the titanium connector, and the omnigrip screw. After the porcelain is applied to the abutment, you can see the angulation that we're able to achieve with this abutment, allowing us to be screw retained. We've also taken this mesial distally and tipped it so that we can also create the ideal angle from that position as well. So if we take this to the model and start to apply it into the soft tissue model area, you'll see that it slides in quite nicely and it allows us to get it into a position of idealized uh, dentistry. So looking inside, you'll see this Omnigrip screw, which is the blue screw. And you'll see a smooth aspect to this with uh, a thread on the end. Looking over the occlusal aspect, we can see that the channel is now idealized. We'll place the Omnigrip driver in. Look how it articulates. So it actually snaps in place because of the design of the end of the screwdriver and the design of the screw. The two get articulated quite nicely. So let's take this off. And what you'll notice when you take it off is sometimes the metal connector is going to stay stuck into the conical connection because this is what is desirable. We want this to be kind of a precise fit. So to get this off, it's very easy. What you have to do is just take your Omnigrip grip screwdriver, rotate it twice side to side, and then the uh, metal connector will just pop right off of the implant. You could also just leave it there because it's referenced, it's hexed. So it is a very precise fit, so you don't have to take it off if you feel that it's uh, not really desirable to do so. Now that we have everything checked on the model, we're going to take the Unigrip driver and remove that uh, fracture crown out of the position so we can place the new ASC abutment. So we'll take this, back it out. Um, I've been using this as a temporary in the meantime, but once we back it out, we'll be ready to place this new abutment that we fabricated for this particular situation. You'll remember when we were first taking this off, we found the cement underneath this abutment. And this is not really desirable. But it's because of this uh, particular undercut here. So we don't want this to be happening in the future. So 
By using screw retain, we don't have this particular problem whatsoever. So using the Unigrip driver, we're able to bring this latch type of uh, driver out and place the Omnigrip driver back in the same prosthetic tooling. So the prosthetic kit, all you need to have is this Omnigrip driver. That's the only thing you have to purchase in order to do this particular procedure. Now it does have to be on a conical connection implant like the Noble Active or the Replace CC, but here's the abutment. It's going to fit down in this conical connection, be angled with this new screw, with the Omnigrip screw. And you can see this can be tipped up to 25 degrees and still tightened, which is fantastic. So as it goes inside, we can see you can still rotate around an axis on an angle because of this articulated type of screw. The final torque is going to be 35 newtons on this particular screw, which is the same on other screws in the same situation. So once we tighten this down, the patient's not going to feel it. It's going to be exactly the same design as the original abutment that was in this position. I like to take an x-ray of the abutment seating prior to doing the final torque on the implant screw. Here you can see the bone after four years, once I'm placing in the ASC abutment, you can see how the conical connection is maintaining this particular bone. If we move down the abutment, you can see how uniform the porcelain is due to the computer milling of this particular interface. So we'll take the Nobel BioCare prosthetic kit and we'll use the torque wrench. And we want to position the torque wrench so that the back is showing the Nobel BioCare when we put in the particular driver. So we have the uh, Omnigrip screwdriver in this particular case. We are going to snap it in and we're going to use this, this particular prosthetic wrench to tighten it down. So when we're tightening it down, we only want to touch in two particular spots. On the back right here, we're going to put position here. And secondly, only on the teardrop right here. So these are the only two aspects we want to touch when we're tightening down a screw. So as we tighten this down, we're going to take this to 35 Newton centimeters, which we're about getting to right here. So at 35, the screw is at the final torque, and allowing us to know that this is locked down in the conical connection, providing us with the stability that we'll need for long-term success. So the ASC is providing some very beautiful aesthetics. If we look at it, the soft tissues have been maintained, nice papilla, connective tissue still there. If we look inside we can actually see the Omnigrip screw and it's this blue screw that's so important to this whole type of assembly because it enables you to tighten on an angle. But look at the papilla here. This beautiful papilla, very aesthetic. So when we're restoring this we'll place a little bit of cotton inside the channel to make sure that the screw is uh, going to be covered over before we put the composite in place. So placing some composite in we're then going to cure it and then make sure that the uh, patient has a long-term success. But if we have to take this off ever again, now we have the ability to come back in, use the Omnigrip driver, and get this off if we had to change it, modify it, do anything to it. So I like the flexibility of this because the other way I had to destroy the crown in order to get it out. So this way, if I had to fix something, I can still do that. Now if we look at this abutment one more time, we can see the problem. The problem is this emergence profile down to the implant size. It's like a wine glass and so cement's going to get caught up in this area sometimes and what happens is when it gets caught up there, you can't see it on x-ray. So we have to rely on tactile feel to get the cement out because the tissues are a little bit looser around an implant. So therefore, when the cement gets stuck in these areas, we have to be really diligent about getting out. So ASC is a great way to get the option to go screw retained on these cases. I think you'll agree with me that the final result is very beautiful. The papilla came out nice, the soft tissue grafting that came out beautiful, and the ASC abutment is really performing well here. So I'm using this abutment in the anterior, in the posterior, and all around the mouth. It actually is a great abutment. Um, you could use gold, but uh, you can't tip gold as far as you can. You can only tip gold a little bit. Plus, the cost of gold is so high that we need to have options where we can use zirconia, which is a very strong 1400 megapascal strength. 
So this is the ability to tip the channel that's so critical for us. We can tip this back to 25 degrees. Here showing if you go too far again, it turns red. But we can keep this very slender and very strong and very beautiful for the patient. So once we have this abutment, the porcelain can get added on. And then we're able to create a very gorgeous type of crown. So you can see the aesthetics of this particular case pillar being held by a temporary and then we come back in with the ASE abutment and we can really duplicate the exact shape and, and size of the temporary crown and make this so that it's a excellent result and then the patient will rave about this and really enjoy the crown for many years to come. So it's a, a very great advancement in implant dentistry. So in order to get started with this you have to have a lab with a Nobel Procera 2G scanner you have to have a surgeon place a conical connection implant. You'll need to purchase an OmniGrip driver. And lastly, you'll have to ask for an ASC abutment. So I'd like to thank Nobel BioCare for providing me this opportunity to discuss the ASC abutment with you. And thank you to you as well for tuning into this WebEx. And hopefully you'll give it, get a chance to try this uh, ASC abutment and see how fantastic it really is. This is Dr. Scott McLean and this is a WebEx about the ASC abutment.